How's it going guys? So in today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use modern texturing and lighting methods to give your designs a lot more pop. This is going to be very modern styled and a lot more like product rendering, different things like that. You're going to encounter processes and lighting and texturing like that. We're not making complicated lighting. We're not making complicated textures, but using these simple methods, you can combine them all to make something really, really cool and really interesting. Today's video is brought to you by Concept D. They make really, really great laptops for creatives. Today, I'm going to be using the Concept D 7 Pro. So in the description, you're gonna find a download to this specific file. We're gonna be using this to texture and light. So this is the scene. It's gonna be just have one material, no lights, all that fun stuff. If you click on material preview, it's just gonna look like that. So first we're gonna go ahead and light this and we're gonna light it in cycles. First, I'm gonna hit shift A and get in a spotlight. I found spotlights to be one of my favorite uses of um, lighting recently. It's one of my favorite setups. So I'm gonna show you something I've been doing a lot lately. So I'm just hitting G to kind of move it around. I'm gonna hit R twice. And there we go. We have our uh, light hitting our scene. So we're gonna use cycles to light this because we have cycles X now. It's really not gonna be super laggy. If it is laggy on your laptop or computer, uh, you can do it in EV. It's gonna look a little different, but it still will work in EV. So I'm gonna click on the little lighting icon. I'm gonna click the cycles render. And then we're gonna go ahead and give my power at maybe 20,000. These need a lot of light to work or, or a lot of brightness that is. Okay, so now we have this pretty bright, pretty cool. So what I'm gonna do here, and the reason why I specifically made it really bright is because I wanna play with some exposure. So if you click on the camera icon, scroll down to color management right here, Let's go ahead and bring that exposure down. For me, I love the way it looks when you bring the exposure down on a really bright scene. And then you can also go from look to high contrast. And it just, I love this look. It really cool. It's really cool, fairly unique, and one of my favorite things to do lately. Now we're gonna go back to the spotlight settings and play with the spotlight itself. So I'm gonna go ahead and play with my spot size and bring it down. And what I wanna do is actually only light a portion of this, cause it's a really cool, unique effect. What we're going for is a unique lighting setup. Nothing basic, nothing we've seen before, not a very, just three point lighting setup. This is gonna be cool. So we're gonna bring it to where it just kinda has this oval spotlight right here and it kinda cuts off right there, cuts off here. And then what I'm gonna do now is take the radius and bring that radius up so it's a more smooth gradient to everything. So now we have that. If you go to uh, material preview and hit this drop down, you can click scene world, scene lights, and you can see how it looks in EV and you can kind of play with it in EV if cycles is really bogging you down. Next thing I'm gonna do is fill out the rest of the scene. So I'm gonna hit shift A, I'm gonna get a light and we're gonna get an area light. So bring this up and then we're gonna scale it up like this. And then I'm gonna go ahead and bring this up a lot higher and then we'll give the power at maybe 500. There we go. And we'll bring that down some. Tell there's a you know fair amount of contrast in the scene. And then one more I wanna do, I'm gonna hit Alt D and bring this over and then I'm gonna hit R to kind of rotate it. I'm gonna hit R twice. And I did Alt D so that both of these area lights have the same amount of power so I can control both of them at the same time. Now we get this nice light coming in right here. So there we go. That is our lighting. It's really fun. It's really unique. And it just will kind of separate you from just the basic soft lighting that I've been teaching for quite a while in here. All right, so now we're gonna get into the fairly tedious portion of this tutorial, which is making basic materials, but using them tastefully around the scene to kind of engage your senses and feel like you can touch the scene and just really basic stuff that I've taught before, but all together and using sort of an, a theory to kind of put them, place them around to make it look nice and engaging. So we're going to make seven materials, seven basic materials. So let's go ahead and start doing that now. So we're gonna go here to the shading workspace. I'm gonna go click on material preview and I'm just gonna hit that drop down like I did. So first let's make this material here. So first we're gonna make a nice wavy material. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my color ramp and I'm gonna pick the base color that I wanna go with for the remainder of this tutorial. So I'm gonna go with a nice blue right about here and I'm gonna go ahead and copy the hex of that. And I'm gonna go in and I'm going to paste the hex of that and just make it a little bit darker. And that's gonna allow the texture we use next to really um, in, 
initiate that and really have some fun with it. And I'm going to bring this down a little bit. So now we have this, let's bug the color straight here and we're going to get in a wave texture. Plug the color into the factor of the color ramp. Now you'll notice all of these materials are, are being edited at the same time. That's a mistake on my part. So that's because they all have the same material on them. Just click this number right here and it will just make this texture right here by itself. So now that we have this, we're gonna go ahead and play with some distortion. So we're gonna distort it a little bit like that. Now you'll need to have the Node Wrangler add-on enabled. It comes with Blender by default. I'm gonna hit Control T, then hit G to move them up. And then we're gonna use the object coordinate for the mapping. So now we have this kind of wavy, fun stuff happening here. And then we're gonna bring that scale up just so that it's affecting it just a little bit. And then we're gonna go ahead and get a bump node. Shift A, search B, U, M, bump. We're gonna plug that into the, we're gonna plug this into the normal. And then on the wave texture, we'll just plug the wave texture first into a color ramp. Like again, like I said, this is very tedious. So we'll plug that into the height and we'll plug the color into the color ramp. So now you have all this craziness. We're gonna bring the white in just so there's a little bit. These materials are supposed to be very subtle, quiet textures. And so we'll bring that strength down a little bit just so it engages with the lighting. And then we'll do the same thing here. Play with that color just like this. So you can see how that's happening. There we go. Now you can really see what's going on. Very simple texture. And then let's go ahead and back out. Let's go back out and look at it here in cycles. So this material specifically is what we wanted to look at. So we just created that, got some darkness in these cracks. Now we'll move on to the next material. So we'll go back to shading. Let's go ahead and pick this one here and we're gonna make this neon yellow. So I'm gonna click on this number right here. So make a duplicate and let's make this kind of neon yellow, just like that. Copy that hex and then paste the hex there. And again, make it a little bit darker. Let's get a Voronoi texture. So we're just gonna use the basic Voronoi so we can add some detail. The whole idea behind the, sec the texturing portion of this tutorial is just engaging your visual senses when looking at a very basic model setup. So you, there's a lot to look at. So all we wanna do is incorporate shape and color in very random ways, but they still kind of work together so that it engages your senses. That's what we're doing here. We're not focusing on overly technical materials. We're not trying to be make the craziest material, just using the procedural texture system to make something interesting um, and very interesting looking. So we're gonna plug the color into this right here. And then we're just gonna bring that scale up to do that. Let's go ahead and get a bump node. We'll plug the bump into the normal and we'll plug the color into the height. Again, using that bump to engage the senses so we have a little bit of bumping to engage with our lighting, making this a much more interesting object to look at. And we can bring this up a little bit so we can see the, those color changes. When you're working on texturing and try to get a lot of accuracy, it's good to have a really good screen to work with. The Concept D7 Pro is perfect. It's got a 100% Adobe RGB color gamut, Delta E2 color accuracy, 81% screen to body ratio, and 400 units of brightness. This screen is great. I have no complaints with it. I'm loving it. So we'll go on to the next uh, material here, which is this kind of blue one. So we'll click the 25 here. So this one is just gonna be a basic noise texture uh, material. So we're gonna go ahead and hit NOI. So NOI, noise texture here, hit Control T. And then we'll go to the object coordinate, of course, so that it evenly distributes around that object. So now we're gonna get a little bit of fun here. Let's bring that scale up so we can start to see what we're dealing with. And let's quickly get that bump node. So we need a bump node. Let's go ahead and highlight these. I'm gonna hit G to move it back and we'll get in a color ramp. Plug the normal into the normal, color into the height. It's gonna take a minute to load and we'll plug the factor into the color ramp. 
All right, now it looks really crazy. We'll bring the strength down and then we'll play with some of these. We want it to be a very grainy, very subtle material. So we'll bring that detail up pretty far, bring it closer to 16, maybe 15, and then bring that roughness up. Now it's gonna do that. And then we can kind of play with our color ramp to give it some variety in there. So you can see how it's flattening out. That's what we want. And you can kind of bring this over to flatten out that top. And now we have a really nice, still engages your senses. You feel like you can reach out and touch it, but we've kind of optimized and made a better noise texture with this. Let's move on to the texture that's gonna be on the pop letter. Now this is really cool and it's pretty important part of this design. So I'm gonna get better lighting here. So let's click on that. Let's click on that and we'll go to the texture. So in this case, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go here and I'm going to click on the hex code of this yellow. Let's go here and then on this color ramp, let's just go ahead and paste it right in there. Oops, so first off, let's make that duplicate and then paste it in there. So now we have this. Let's go ahead and delete this texture and let's get a gradient. Gradient texture. And this one is my favorite in terms of having some sort of texture theory and having a reason, specific reason why you're making specific decisions. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna bring these in to make it look more dramatic. And then let's go ahead and rotate this. Let's see which axis doesn't need to be rotated on. Right here, so 90 degrees here. And then we'll play with that location. So we need to play with the X location to bring that blue here on the bottom. Now I did this on a previous tutorial and for the same reason I'm doing it now. What I want is for the blue to be touching blue texture. So it almost looks like the materials are seeping into this material. I really love, I really, really love that effect. So I'm just gonna go ahead and bring this so it's a subtle change. Let me bring that up a little bit. There we go. So now the pop letter, the material is in a sense seeping into the blue ones that it's touching. I really, really love that. Now I'm gonna go ahead and click on this material that we have the noise texture on. I'm gonna go ahead and get these guys, right click and copy. I'm gonna go here and right click and paste, and then just plug that straight into the normal so that we can have that same noise texture on this big piece here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and bring my scale down to maybe 75. I want this to be a lot bigger. And then we're gonna strength up, do something like this, maybe a lot bigger. Something like, something around there. That looks better for this particular texture. Maybe bring that strength down a little bit. And let's just check it out in cycles. So the strength is definitely too high. There we go, something like that. That looks pretty good. For this back texture, I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate that right there. And then I'm gonna go ahead and paste that noise texture again here. But in this case, we're just gonna have it be plain color. So I'm gonna delete that wave texture. I'm just gonna leave the color ramp there because it's not going to be changing anything. So in this case, we're gonna manipulate that noise texture. So let's bring that scale up to maybe 50 for now. It's probably still gonna to be too big. And let's bring back that color ramp and just bring that strength up so we can see. So I just wanna make these little gashes in the scene. So something like, just like that. Roughness is really high. And then we'll bring that scale to maybe 20. There we go. I just wanted some kind of simple, small gashes, small details in this. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click this guy, hold down shift, click this guy, control L, link materials. Now they have the same material on them and that's what I wanna see. For this material here, we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and copy. Whoop, I'm gonna go ahead and copy that color ramp and we're gonna go ahead. And, so I'm gonna go ahead and um, paste the color ramp, plug it there, and we're gonna get in a magic texture. So I keep pasting this color ramp. That's simply me being lazy so I don't have to copy the hex code. It's really just gonna give you the same color. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit Control T, get that object coordinate, and we're gonna get a bump. This one is another just engaging the senses texture. We're gonna bring that depth down to one and plug this into the height. And then we're bring that scale pretty high up, bring that strength down. Now I've created a nice texture and I'm gonna put that texture, 
And I'm also gonna put that texture on this object here. So I'm gonna click it, hold down shift, click it there, control L, link materials. And then this texture, control L, link materials. In fact, on this one, we're gonna make a duplicate here. And then in this case, we're just gonna use a Voronoi instead of a noise. Make it simple. We're basically making a blue version of the yellow texture that's right next to it. And then we'll bring that scale really high up. Oh, look, it's making these little circles. That's because I'm using distance. We might as well just keep it. It still works. It still works. It's still interesting. And then we'll just do that. Cool. I was planning on making it look like that, but in this case, this looks really good too. And then we're going to plug this here. So now I have some color variation there. Looks weird, but I think we can go with it. I'm happy with it. So we'll do something like that. There we go. I like that. Larger scale. And then I'm going to go ahead and click on this guy, click on this guy, control L, link materials. And so what I'm going to go do now is because I'm kind of done texturing. Can't remember how many textures I made, but uh, this will be good for now. And I'm going to go ahead, hit this one. Click this guy, click this guy, control L and link the materials. I'm gonna go around the scene and just start applying those materials to different things until I'm done applying materials. All right, now we're done applying materials. Let's click on the render button and just bring up some of those area lights to fill out the scene a little bit better because it's kind of dark. And there we go. We have now successfully made an interesting scene. So let me go ahead and render it and we can look at it and talk about it. So here is the finished product. And what you're looking at is, you know, kind of a work in progress, to be honest. I'd play with the lighting a little bit more. I would move around the texture a little bit more. But conceptually speaking, this is what I wanted to achieve. A nice, nicely lit setup with a lot of texture variety to get you to kind of look at it longer. Instead of just having the basic principle, you know, and having smooth textures, having more interesting textures really will take your design to the next level. Um, and that was the whole goal of this and really teach you like, hey, you don't have to get overly complicated with textures. You can play with lighting, play with your symbols and textures and objects and all that fun stuff to make something interesting. So there you guys go. Thank you guys for watching that. Thank you, Concept D, for sponsoring the channel. Check out the Concept D 7 Pro in the description if you'd like to check that out. And I will see you guys in the next tutorial.